Well, actually, um, thank you, IATS organizers, the foundation and markets, and uh, fellow panelists, audience. Um, I'm going to begin with a very grim introduction. We must all die. And I think COVID has been a very good reminder of that. But what happens when we die is the question. And uh, those of you who might have watched the Tukdam documentary two days ago might have been stimulated and aroused to think about this. Here I like to like to explore the concept of Buddha nature and death and how um, uh, how the the connection between these two might have evolved uh, through the centuries. Yeah, so um, when you look at uh, Buddha nature teachings, you see this recurring connection between Buddha nature and uh, dying. And uh, I want to point out three primary sort of, um, cases that I've encountered. Uh, first one is Mahabharata Nirvana of the Buddha. The Mahabharata Nirvana Sutra talks about Buddha nature. Why? Why are we talking about Buddha nature uh, in the sutra discussing Buddha's death? Um, there's definitely, I think, uh, in this case, an effort to undermine the phenomenological death of the Buddha by arguing for a more ontological sort of essence of the Buddha being everlasting and undying. Then you find this anecdote about the Shastric literature of Buddha nature of Chen Kaoche at the age of 56 going with many young colleagues to Kashmir and asking Sajjana for teachings on the Ratnagotra Vivaga, the ultimate continuum. And he says, I don't have time for elaborate exegetical teachings. Can you please give me the teachings of Dharma for dying, Chiche? So again, you find this connection between Ratnagotra Vivaga and uh, Chen Kaoche's interest in the Dharma for death. Then, of course, we know about clear light or luminosity um, prevalent in the later Tantric teachings, uh, especially with regard to Bardo. And um, there are other people who have done a lot of work on Bardo, including uh, Hank Blazer and uh, Brent Kubus. So I won't be talking about much Bardo stuff here, but I will focus on the Chika Bardo of the six different types of Bardo we normally talk about and how uh, clear light slash luminosity is being brought up in in the context of the Chika part of the sort of final point of death. And so uh, when you go through different Buddha nature teachings, I think the earliest perhaps is the Mahaparinirvana Sutra, where you find a very clear, distinct connection between death and Buddha nature being brought uh, out. So you have the Buddha advising Chunda, you know, my passing into Nirvana today, O Chunda, do not think of it. Uh, to be like a big fire being extinguished. Regarding matters of the Tathagata, consider the Tathagata Garba to be like the Mount Sumeru. As I enter Nirvana, I shall experience supreme bliss. That is the nature of the Buddhas. Therefore, do not mourn. So, very uh, sort of palpable, clear message from the Buddha advising Chunda about the connection. So, of course, this doesn't apply to other sentient beings in, this, in the context of this sutra. But then this sutra, which was not translated into Tibetan, it seems. Of course, there is a Tibetan version of the Tambishya Jamanyar Shafido, but uh, that sutra, I haven't read the entire sutra, but it doesn't seem to contain this particular passage, which appears in the Chinese version, uh, later produced in Edward Conde's Buddhist text through ages. And here you can see again, finally, as the time of the death approaches, he sees a bright light. And being unaccustomed to it at the time of his death, he is perplexed and confused. So there is a whole process of how you go through this white flash, karlam, the red flash, malam, and then the USL experience in this sutra, which was translated into Chinese in 542. So it certainly must have existed in India before that. Then um, in Tibet itself, this is the earliest sutra, perhaps, Atya Yajnana Mahanayana Sutra. Uh, which is very common, is one of the five or ten royal sutras translated in the 8th century. Uh, uh, 8th century. And here you again, uh, with regard to advice for death, the blessed one advises Akasha Garva uh, what to think about at the hour of death. 
all phenomena are naturally luminous. So one should cultivate clear understanding of non-apprehension. So um, these are the few sutras that are found. And then as we sort of move forward, you have the tantras from the Nyingma uh, collection, especially the, one of the earliest, the Thaljur Chirpiju, where you can have Chikel and Thawis, Namshin, Namka Dala, Namka, Yesel, Latim, Du, Tarak, Nama, Pim, Galpe, how clear light or luminosity, when space dissolves into it, all force and subtle experience cease to exist. Then the same we find in Yinda Khajur. I think a lot of the tantras do show this connection in very quoted, sort of abstract language, but here I'm trying to bring out some that are very clear and specific. So Yinda Khajur talking about consciousness of a person dissolving into a luminosity or clear light. Uh, forgive me, I generally prefer the term luminosity, which Casey and many others have used earlier. But here, I just use clear light to be consistent with it. some translations I've also been uh, using in this presentation. And then you have uh, the Dzogchen Tantra Rikpa Rangsha, where you find more detailed, elaborate explanation of how the external elements dissolve into the internal elements, the internal into the secret, and the secret into the complete elements and then how that further dissolves into um, the heart, the bindu, the lamp, into light, body, and so forth. So it gets quite elaborate in, the, uh, in some of what we can consider as the later sort of Mingma Tantras. And it's not just the Mingma Tantras, of course. When you look at the Sarma Tantras, you again find um, um, this being mentioned. This one is a fairly cryptic Kalachakra verse. Uh, but uh, if you read somebody like uh, Rendawa's commentary on this verse, it becomes very clear that uh, the verse is talking about luminosity at the time of death. So the mind will be free from fire, dark space, and object, and placed in the middle stage. And Rendawa argues that this middle stage is alaya vijnana, or alaya rather, alaya vijnana, and uh, clear light. Then you find other samatantas like these. Um, the, uh, um, Mahasamburadaya Tantra, where you find the mention of Namshi Dumni Kunshi Rujupi Deshi Shepai, Yesel Wai Kopang Top. When all six consciousness enter the Alaya, one reaches the state of luminosity. Same you find also with Vajrasri uh, um, Varamahakalpa Adi, uh, talking about how, because of the channels, vital air, and essential truths. Um, merging into duality, um, into blissful emptiness, um, and how that kind of state is called the ultimate, the final death, so forth. Um, then you have, as you move from the canonical tantras, the most explicit I find is uh, the sort of uh, root uh, literature for the culture, the Kayam uh, Thema, Aha Param, Parama Saman, Samyak, sorry, Samyak Namadakini Upadesha. Here you find very clearly discussing uh, how having merged with clear light or luminosity in the intermediate state of time, burning down all propensities, where one becomes enlightened in the form of the union body. And again, you find the second verse the transcendent transference through clear light is to be known at the time of time. So, uh, from here on, this guy on the same mostly coming from Tilopa as a, um, it's almost like a canonical uh, literature. Then you find the other Kajupa uh, hierarchs uh, elaborating this. You find it in the Shadharma Upadesha, uh, mentioned about uh, how uh, you remain in the state of reality at the time of death. Then you find the same with the um, Karnatarutra Vajrapada in Toji Sikam. Yusel Musin, Mabu Ermete, recognizing the clear light, the mother and the child will meet, a case of how the personal experiential uh, experience of luminosity will merge with the, the bigger luminosity um, at the time of death. 
and then this these sort of uh, original texts get interpreted very intensely in the Kajui tradition, uh, which Casey has also earlier shared. We have here the Chuduk uh, Kapema, which you saw earlier. Here we have the mention of uh, uh, at the time of death, you sell the main Pachat Hamsi Sigme, Sangye Mo. It's kind of, in these cases, you're arguing for enlightenment with very little effort. Gombe Sangye Kulla Yue, Magom Sangye Shedna Me. This kind of tradition, arguing that this is a very effective way to reach Buddhahood. Then um, you have, after that, again, Marpa elaborating this further, I'm not going to read through the whole text, but just to give you a taste of what are the main areas where you get the, the term Nostro clear light mentioned uh, with regard to death. This goes further down to Melarepa again. Melarepa also elaborates on this, talking about the experience of achievement, the final experience you have before your sort of, uh, person um, dissolves into the state of luminosity. And then coming to Gamboba. So you find the connection between death and luminosity, I think, most uh, sort of elaborated and uh, explained, um, elucidated in the Kaju tradition, um, in especially in, you know, highlighting how luminosity is being actualized at the point of death. But of course, there are other traditions, which, including the sutras and the Nigma Trantas, which um, must have certainly changed the way this idea, the, the ritual implication of um, luminosity at death has, how it has evolved. But in addition to the tantric development, I think there was also a sutra-based development coming down from Ten Khaoche. And uh, if you look at some of the early Kadamba writings uh, on Julama, this is one of the Julama instructions. We don't quite know who the author is, but a very cryptic old text. You can see how there is some focus, a sutra-based focus on uh, luminosity at the time of death. And these sort of developments, I think, then finally sort of culminated in the uh, very well-known presentation in the Bardo Total liberation uh, through hearing. And, uh, I, there's a lot to read here, but this is the text that deals with the Chikha and uh, uh, the recognition of the luminosity at that point. Um, but until even then, we don't actually find Buddha nature, Tathagata Garba being explicitly mentioned <laughs> with the relationship to death until we reach somebody like Selena Sokrangal. And here, you know, when you look at uh, sorry, this is not the This is Akya uh, Yongjin. And uh, so he, you find only in these later masters where they bring the Buddha nature, the terms like uh, Datu and Tathagata Karba being used effectively in this context. So Akya Yongjin's uh, presentation of the Bardo is a very elaborate, very com uh, clear, well presented. Uh, text on that, and then, oh, so this is Selena Surandu, sorry. So you find uh, Selena Surandu actually pointing out uh, Buddha nature, Tathagata Garba, no, the Shishikpa, the Shishikpa in Mingbo. So around only this time, then there is a direct link being created between Tathagata Garba and the USL um, experience at the time of death. And in the Yeruk tradition, this is, uh, sorry, Akya Yongzin here um, explaining it and this book has been published uh, translated by Latin Bush and Jeffrey Hawkins long time ago. So basically when you sort of go through a building tour of these texts and writings uh, on Buddha nature and death, um, I personally think that this idea, this connection between dying and Buddha nature probably starts, can be traced back as early as the Buddha nature sutras. Uh, but not necessarily using the terms like Tathagata Garba or definitely not Gotra, but using the term Prabhasura mostly. But it is the tantric materials that uh, amplify and that elaborate this topic, that bring it out with great uh, detail, and also um, use this for eschatological accounts and funerary practices. 
But then in addition to tantric uh, practices, there must have been at one point coming down from Ten Khawaj, a sutra-based practice, although we don't yet know what kind of structure it had, what kind of regime they might have had. Um, if you, for instance, look at the Lojong practices today or the Nyondro practices today, could there have been also a uh, Buddha nature Jilama practice of the same sort structured and uh, presented in the same way? But we don't know. There are so many questions. And I would now turn to the learned audience for your views and insights. Uh, thank you.